Madam President. The Senator from Oklahoma. Madam President, I ask for consent that I be recognized up to 20 minutes as if in morning business. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. I, it's been 22 days now since Hamas has begun, began its most recent campaign of terrorism attacks against the innocent citizens of, uh, of, Iran, of, uh, of Israel. Since the operation began, 32 tunnels have been uncovered that would have been used to attack Israel. On Saturday and Sunday, this past Saturday and Sunday alone, almost 100 rockets were fired at Israel. In the Gaza Strip, since the beginning of Operation Protective Eagle, and that would have been uh, the July 8th, there have been over 2,000 Hamas rockets fired into Israel with Tel Aviv and Jerusalem both in the target. Israel has responded, as any nation protecting its people would, with airstrikes and ground troops to silence these uh, Hamas terrorists. Uh, you know, the, the Israelis are tough, and, and I, I, I just re have to remind people all, people all the time that since their independence back in the 40s, they've been attacked. Uh, Israel's been attacked six different times, and we remember how they are outnumbered in the Six-Day War in 1967, and they won. They prevailed. Uh, then again, the same thing, Young Kipper, that was, in, um, that was in 1973. Again, they prevailed. And I have often kidded with them, and I've told uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu this, that the Israelis consider a free fight being outnumbered um, uh, two to one. So they're a great bunch of people, and we, we've got to continue to, uh, to um, support them. The Hamas terrorists are not only killing Israelis, they're killing their own people too uh, because they placed their rocket launchers, and we see this is happening just yesterday. We saw a picture of this. Their rocket launchers in the middle of their own population centers. We're talking about in homes, in hospitals, in, in mosques, and like the cowards they are, they use civilians if, as human shields. And despite Israel's extensive precautionary uh, uh, behavior and measures to avoid collateral damage, casualties unfortunately have occurred, and Hamas bears complete responsibilities for the, for the civilian deaths. As Prime Minister Net Netanyahu said, and this is a quote, he said, Israel is using missile defense to protect our citizens, and Hamas is using their civilians to protect their missiles. But to date, the Israelis a uh, missile defense system called the Iron Dome has successfully uh, intercepted over 400 Hamas rockets headed toward the populated areas in Israel. Uh, I was just in Israel last month, and, uh, and I visited the Iron Dome battery. You see, there has to be a place where they, they, they initiate these protective devices. And here they are over there, and I, I, I was so impressed with the young Israeli troops that operate it uh, in the southern city of uh, Ashkelon. The same battery you see on TV every night intercepting Hamas rockets comes from the Gaza Strip 13 kilometers away. I've got a picture here I want you to look at, Madam President. This young, this beautiful young first lieutenant uh, for in the Israeli army I met, and she's the one in charge of the Ashkelon uh, battery down there, and she is doing her duty right now as we speak and bravely protecting her fellow citizens. Her name is Lee Shmulevich, and I salute her. Uh, as ranking member of the, yes, leave that up, that's good. That gives people an idea of what the, the commitment that is made, made, being made by the Israeli people uh, and, and the successes they're having. As ranking member, uh, which I am, of the Senate Armed Services Committee, I'm proud to say that I've been a constant supporter of the Iron Dome. Has, which we have done on a nonpartisan basis. We have put in uh, uh, the uh, authorization for 175 million in this last authorization bill, and then we added another 176 million that would take care of not just the uh, the Iron Dome, but also other uh, systems that we have, like David Sling and Arrow. Three. These are jointly developed by the United States and Israel. I think it's important that people understand. I've heard people say, well, you're just sending all this stuff over from us to Israel. Well, if that were true, it's, it'd be worth doing it anyway, because they're looking out after our interests. Those things that they're not able to do in the Middle East, we would have to be doing with our equipment, with our young people. But they, this isn't the case. 
they have a, a, a lot of brilliant people over there. And in the case of the Iron Dome, of uh, David's sling, of Arrow 3, and of a lot of the UAVs, their technology is technology that we use. So it's not something that we are doing for them. We're doing it mutually for each other. And uh, the, the, um, I, I think it's important also to notice, right, to note at this point that, and nobody seems to put this together, Hamas would not have the rockets and the capability of trying to kill all of these Israelis if it were not for their greatest threat, and that is the country of Iran. Quite frankly, I think Iran is the greatest threat to the United States also. A lot of people don't realize this, but back in, in 2007, our, at that time it was classified, our intelligence said that by 2015, Iran would have the weapon and a delivery system. Well, that's only six months from now. That has been reconfirmed in our unclassified uh, 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 intelligence starting in about 2010. So right now, they're the ones over there that are, it's, it's really Iran that is responsible for what, what the Hamas has been able to do. And I might ask the question, what is President Obama doing? His rush to reach a nuclear agreement with Iran has undermined years of bipartisan sanctions that were working. We have sanctions, not just by us, but by European countries, other countries that are, have really brought Iran down, not to their knees, because they're still developing their weapon, but nonetheless, they were working. As part of the pre president's agreement, this is what he's doing right now, he, his agreement is to reduce Iran's sanctions in January, he announced it in January, he has endorsed Iran's right to enrich uranium. So let's stop and think about it. This is the deal that he's cut. He said, all right, we'll pull off our sanctions. So you'll be able to uh, receive that the benefit of, of that. At the same time, we're going to let you go ahead and, and continue to enrich, enrich uranium. He's allowed Iran to keep 19,000 centrifuges while unlocking $7 billion in assets. That's assets that were held they can now use in, to their benefit. And he just extended the deal by agreeing to provide Iran with an additional $2.8 billion in frozen assets. That brings the $7 billion up to almost $10 billion. While Iran is building a bomb, Obama is releasing sanctions. I believe the Iranians are using negotiations to buy time as they're developing their nuclear weapon. Again, Netanyahu called the president's agreement a historical mistake that is making the world a much more dangerous place. And history is going to prove that he's right. Obama should demand Iran dismantle its nuclear program, but he won't do it. We should reinstate full sanctions now and consider additional sanctions, but President Obama will not do it. And does anyone really believe that Iran is not involved in Hamas in its attacks? Today, Obama is rewarding Iran by releasing more financial assets to Iran, funding that will be used to support more terrorist terrorism against Israel. There's a little to show for the, uh, the administration's reckless gamble for, for Israel. President Obama is negotiating with an Iranian re regime that has repeatedly deceived us and concealed its nuclear program for over two decades. I see nothing different in this deal. Israel lives in a dangerous neighborhood surrounded by terrorists who refuse to even acknowledge the Jewish state's right to exist. They need all the friends that they can get. You know, I, I keep hearing people talk about this, the two-state uh, solution. The two-state solution between Hamas and, and Israel, it's kind of interesting because Hamas does not consider Israel to be a state. So how can you have a two-state solution if you only have one state? And that's the situation. And that's why I want to salute the country of Egypt. Uh, there's some other friends that we have over there, and I, I've been... Uh, uh, upset with some of the members here in this in this uh, body because they don't have an appreciation for what Egypt and the part that they play in the Middle East and their support for for Israel. And let me tell you, this started a long time ago. The Camp David um, uh, Accords, that was 19, 1979. The Camp David Accords where they made a deal with Israel. Now you've got to keep in mind this was the military of Egypt. It's hard for people in this country to see that sometimes there's a difference between the administration in a country and the military. So it's the military in here that has said that we will be protecting uh, 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 Israel. We had not too long ago an effort from this, uh, this body 
to try to uh, to uh, stop the, the the shipment of some F-16s that Egypt had already bought. Now, granted, that was back during the uh, President Morsi and his radical Muslim Brotherhood. But nonetheless, these were going not to him, but to the military. And this newly elected President Sisi has successfully destroyed. He's working hand and right along with the Israelis. He has been involved in his people and his military, uh, destroying over 90% of the tunnels that are going from the Sinai to Gaza. So I only mention this because if those individuals who don't understand this might consider punishing Egypt, and if you punish Egypt, you are punishing to the same degree uh, Israel. Uh, the turbulent times we face serve as a reminder why the United States and Israel have got to continue to work together and the same enemies that threaten the existence of Israel also want to destroy America. Over the years, the United States has greatly benefited from the cooperation with Israel on missile defense technologies, and we've got to continue that critical partnership. Israel is our most faithful ally, our most critical partner in the whole region, and acts as a roadblock against terrorism, terrorism that would be hitting the United States of America. The United States stands shoulder to shoulder with Israel and supports its right to defend himself. And I, since his first budget, President Obama has been degrading our military while also making the world uh, most, uh, more dangerous through an apologetic and reactive foreign policy of appeasement. I often quote Ira Mann, he said, no man survives when freedom fails, the best men rot in filthy jails, and those who cried, appease, appease, are hanged by those they tried to please. We've got to get out of that system, and we've got to stand by, uh, uh, by Israel and hang tough with our best friend. We can't survive without it. I often look back and say that I, I look back wistfully at the days of the Cold War, that was back when they had two superpowers in the, in the world. You had the USSR and you had the United States. We knew what they had. They knew what we had. Uh, we knew what their capacities were. They knew ours. They had a system called uh, MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction, which meant, you know, you shoot at us, we'll shoot at you. You die, we'd all die, and everyone's happy. That's not, that doesn't work anymore. Now you have these rogue elements out there that are developing weapons that can wipe out an entire United States city. And I'm talking about not just in the Middle East, but North Korea also. So we're looking at the Middle East. We're looking at our only way of defending our allies there and of, of working to stop the, the capabilities of countries like Iran to have a weapon that would reach the United States of America. So we've got to hang tough with our best friend, Israel, and I pray that we do. Thank you, Madam President.